Hey, uh, real quick before this video starts, I wanna make a bit of a disclaimer. You read the title, obviously we're talking about Phineas and Ferb today. And I've been working on this video for a while. I think I started it back in March. But as I finally got around to editing and finalizing things, uh, you might've heard, the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild, SAG-AFTRA, went on strike to fight for fair wages, to not be replaced by AI, no joke, among other things. As a result, I've started to feel a little iffy about going about my regular business, talking about cartoons and TV, while the people who make the things we love to watch are out there on strike. Especially when talking about Disney stuff, considering their CEO has called the demands of those on strike not realistic, all while making tens of millions a year himself. Come on. Unfortunately, it was too late for me to cancel this video and pivot to another topic, but rest assured, I am not being paid a single dime by Disney or any studio for that matter to talk about the shows I cover on this channel. And once this video is done, I'm gonna do my best to try and pivot my content away from TV shows for, you know, a little while. So yeah, just wanted to put that out there. I support those on strike. I'll put some resources in the description below if you want to learn a bit more. And with that, on with the video. I don't believe it. I, I really don't believe it. Phineas and Ferb returning with 40 episodes across two new seasons. After officially ending eight whole years ago, Phineas and Ferb are back. Do you know what this means? Denial worked! Pretending Phineas and Ferb wasn't over actually brought Phineas and Ferb back! We did it! Woo! So yeah, uh, you may have heard the news that beloved Disney Channel animated classic Phineas and Ferb is coming back for not just one, but two brand new seasons, which is insane. A couple of years ago, I made a whole video called Pretending Phineas and Ferb Isn't Over, where I took a look at a bunch of random Phineas and Ferb and Phineas and Ferb adjacent stuff to fill the void. And then last year I did a similar thing, except I looked exclusively at a bunch of Phineas and Ferb video games. Uh, doing a Phineas and Ferb denial video every June, or July, has basically become a tradition here. Ringing in the summer with the most summary of all shows, except the winter episodes, and then boom, the show's just back now. Okay, cool. But first, I gotta give a huge shout out to the sponsor who's financially enabling today's concerning spiral into cartoon hyperfixation, Tower of God New World. The brand new RPG based on the long running South Korean webtoon, Tower of God. Yes, this intensely popular and acclaimed series is coming to the App Store and Google Play Store. And it looks good. The game's boasting some really nice nice looking graphics and animations, recreating the characters and world of the original series in crisp 3D. I mean, just look at some of these cinematics. The art style is unreal. Look at that. Look at that! But of course, it wouldn't be an RPG without some flashy and engaging battles and a varied cast of characters. I really think Tower of God fans will get a kick out of seeing all these characters gussied up in 3D and collecting them throughout the campaign. So for any Tower of God fans out there, or if you just think this looks cool, you can head down to the top link in this video's description to pre-register for Tower of God New World's upcoming release later this month on July 26th, 2023. There's actually an event going on right now where if you pre-register, you can score an exclusive character. And speaking of characters, for an extra bit of fun, you can even take this cute personality test to see which Tower of God character you are. And all of that is available at the very top link in this video's description down below. Check it out, pre-register for the game, and help support the Foot of a Ferret channel in the process. I'd really appreciate it. Showing love to the sponsors on these videos really does help out the channel. So major thanks to Tower of God New World for sponsoring today's video, and now, it uh, back to Phineas and Ferb. As exciting as this is, it's actually not that surprising to me. Because despite my whole pretending it's not over bit, Phineas and Ferb never fully went away. There were specials released almost immediately after the show's finale. The creators of Phineas and Ferb made new shows that crossed over with Phineas. And of course, we got a whole new Phineas and Ferb movie on Disney Plus just like a couple of years ago. Mix that with the nearly endless amount of memes and references on TikTok and whatever. And I was just kind of expecting this. Like, I wouldn't really blame any of the more casual fans hearing about this this revival and thinking, wait, Phineas and Ferb ended? Oh, uh, which reminds me, I guess for the three of you here who don't know, Phineas and Ferb was a Disney Channel cartoon about two stepbrothers doing insane stuff every day of their summer vacation, while their pet platypus Perry sneaks off to fight an evil scientist named Doofenshmirtz, and for some reason, uh, everybody sings. The show was created by two guys named Dan Pobbenmeyer and Jeff Swampy Marsh and premiered on Disney Channel back in 2007, where it became a massive instant hit. Genuinely, this is probably the most nostalgic 
nostalgic and timeless show of the late 2000s. So this is all very exciting. A classic cartoon from our childhoods is coming back with a ton of new episodes. But that's like basically all we know. I'm working on this video a few months in advance, so this news is still uh, pretty fresh. And it's entirely possible more will come out by the time you're seeing this, but at the moment, all we really know is two seasons of Phineas and Ferb are being made by Dan Povenmire. Uh, for a while, whether or not Swampy was gonna be involved was actually kind of an unknown as well, but it looks like he is in fact involved, which is a relief. I have a lot of faith in Dan Povenmire, but the idea of an iconic show being revived with only half of its original creators definitely would have made me raise an eyebrow. I mean, it, think about it. If you had to get like surgery that required two doctors and someone came in day of and said, hey, uh, just so you know, only one of the surgeons came in today, is that good? Is that cool? Would you feel confident that everything was gonna go as smoothly as it did when you uh, had surgery in 2007? This comparison kind of got away from me. Anyway, all I'm trying to say here is that Dan and Swampy are making this revival, so it's all good. The surgery we loved as kids is back, but uh, uh, I'm not equipped for this. I'm the pretending it's not over guy. I'm the denial guy. Merch link below. I don't know what to do when my delusions are actually validated. What am I meant to do when the false reality I've built for myself becomes actual reality? I have problems. But I mean, hey, the show's not back just yet. Technically the show's still over, which means this is my last chance to pretend Phineas and Ferb isn't over. It's time to live in denial. It kinda. So for all of us Phineas and Ferb fans who can't wait for the revival's premiere, what do we have to fill the void in the meantime besides just re-binging the show on Disney Plus again? Well, why watch Phineas and Ferb when you can read Phineas and Ferb? That was, that was a horrifically sad sentence. Phineas and Ferb, Candace Against the Universe, the movie, the novel. Yeah, you ever notice this? Ever since I was a kid, I've seen these weird novelizations of popular kids' movies that just make no sense to me. The only reason you'd really want one of these books as a kid is if you've already seen the movie it's based on. So you buy the book and oops, you already know the entire story, so you just never read it. Money wasted. I don't know, it was probably your parents' money, so I guess it didn't matter. Well, I guess Phineas and Ferb couldn't escape that phenomenon because because in 2020, the Disney Plus exclusive movie Candace Against the Universe got a novelization. Do kids even buy books anymore? They read? What's the point of this? As you might expect, this is just the story of the movie in book form. It's 142 pages long, the text is gigantic, and it even has these little black and white screenshots from the movie on basically every page, so you can pretend you're watching the cartoon. Okay, I'm giving this thing a hard time, but it's kinda cute. It's a bit of a novelty, and I guess if you don't have Disney+, Plus, this is an option to experience Phineas and Ferb's big comeback. It was only $7, I mean, that, that is $3, less than a month of Disney Plus. Yeah, maybe giving up full color, voice acting, original songs, and like, yeah, animation is worth the $3 savings to you. I don't know you. Maybe you'd prefer this, Phineas and Ferb's Guide to Life, a Phineas and Ferb themed activity book from 2011 that randomly got a second edition printing in 2020. Apparently Disney was just really banking on Phineas and Ferb books to be like the hot new trend of 2020. Warning, this guide can lead to severe creativity, loss of laziness, and impaired sense of the laws of gravity. Thank God they warned me. So like I said before, Guide to Life is an activity book for basically the littlest, tiniest babies, written from the perspective of Phineas, Ferb, and their friends as they try to teach you how to live a life as exciting as theirs. And they don't waste time either. Page one, what are you doing with your life? Starting those existential crises early, I guess. Did you invent a time machine today? All right, Phineas, lay off the pressure. It's starting to feel like one of those bogus motivational books that are supposed to just make you feel like a loser so you'll keep giving the author money. What kind of racket are these kids? Kids running here. So for the most part, this book is just kind of, I don't know, inconsequential. A lot of it's boiling down random episodes of Phineas and Ferb into goofy little advice segments. And the rest is a bunch of activities where you're supposed to like fill in the blanks, answer questions, or draw or write something down. Which sounds kind of fun until you realize that means that half this book is blank. Seriously, every two or three pages, you get one that's just completely blank. I paid $10 for this. I don't know, man. If you're just jonesing to do some Phineas and for worksheets, I mean, go crazy. But for me, eh, yeah, but that's what I get for reading. No one reads anymore. Pfft. Nah, let's get serious now and talk about some toys. Yeah, so in the first Phineas and Ferb isn't over video, I talked about a few Phineas and Ferb toys, but I didn't actually have any to show. They're all over a decade old and can get kind of expensive nowadays. So I just kinda 
looked at pictures of him on the internet. But not today! That's right, I decided to actually be a competent YouTuber for once and prepare for a video. Huh. Who'd have thought? And trust me, I have a wealth of Phineas and Ferb toys to look at this time around. As usual, I'll eventually go over these in much greater detail on my second channel, Fofi, but for now, uh, let's take a look at a few highlights. Okay, maybe highlights is a strong word. So picture this, it's 2010, I'm 14, you may or may not have been born yet. Oh my God, I'm old. You're a Phineas and Ferb fan, you walk into a toy store and you see these. Ew. Yeah, so I've made no secret of the fact that all of these Phineas and Ferb toys kind of give me the creeps. Phineas is just, just not meant to be 3D, man. And finally seeing these toys in real life does not really help. They're even more 3D now. That's like, that's like the whole problem. Ferb my ride. Okay, two things about this pun. First, there's no Ferb. Second, just, no, bad. Try again. And okay, being real here, I know I'm giving these toys a hard time, but they deserve it. <laughs> yeah, I don't really like these. I mean, conceptually, they're great. Each of these action figure sets come with two characters and something for them to do today. The fact that each toy kind of comes with a scene or activity is perfectly Phineas and Ferb. Not to mention a lot of it's just ripped straight from the show. Like this Perry and Doofenshmirtz set comes with the backfiring Uglyinator, which comes from an episode that I watched literally yesterday. Plus you got Phineas and Ferb building a race car, Phineas and Candace in a band, Phineas and Ferb in a band. Okay, I never said there was variety. And the basic characters themselves are fine. I've ragged on the uh, problematic transition to 3D a lot, but these toys get reused between a lot of the various play sets, so I kind of got used to it. But the Doofenshmirtz and Perry toys are actually right on the money. Legit, I have, I have no complaints about these. Compared to everyone else, these two characters translated to 3D basically perfect. But it's once you start actually trying to you know, play with these toys that everything just kind of falls apart. Like, literally. Phineas and Ferb characters aren't what you might call structurally sound. Their arms and legs are so tiny they couldn't hold up air, let alone like anything else. And naturally, that does not translate great into toys. I swear to God, I couldn't get these toys to fit onto their stands to save my life. And all because their spindly rubber legs just wouldn't stop bending. These are not meant to be bendable, posable toys, by the way. The one of Phineas and Candace was the absolute worst. Not only would neither of them fit or stand properly, but the toy itself was literally meant to rock back and forth rapidly, so yeah, yeah, they just fell off. I spent money on this. Th th this is not good. Eh, some of them are kind of fun though. Uh, the Phineas and Ferb band set was actually kind of cute. When you press down on Ferb's head, he actually kind of plays the drums and they move. And moving the whammy bar on Phineas's guitar makes him strum the strings. Uh, uh, kinda. It's at least a little cool. Then there was the Ferb My Ride set, which, uh, yeah. Yeah, I kinda messed up on. I committed the cardinal sin of buying random stuff on eBay, not reading the description well enough. What I thought was a sealed complete playset here was actually listed as a not complete set. Yeah. Yeah, I feel really stupid about that. Dumb. So yes, the toy had been opened, parts of it had been lost, and what was left was put back in the box and sold as is. Okay, that's fine, I guess. It's a bit disappointing, but I should have just paid more attention. What I'm certain the eBay listing didn't mention was that these toys were covered in dirt. Eh, bleh. Ew. No, bad, ew. Seriously, this box must have been sitting in like a garage or attic for years. I didn't even feel comfortable touching it with my bare hands. I put on gloves. This is, this is genuinely disgusting. Oh my God. Yeah, no, no, I can't do this. I don't care if this thing is rare. I'm, I'm throwing it away. Unbelievable. Selling me a toy they pulled out of a landfill. Friggin' found this thing in the back of a long lost cave. Ugh. I'm in a bad mood now. Let's just move on. Boom, more Phineas toys. What a surprise. But actually, these two aren't just toys. How many of you guys remember Disney Infinity? This is one of those toys to life kids adventure games from like 10 years ago. It, basically, it was Disney's answer to Skylanders. You put a toy on a thing and that unlocks the character and some related content in a larger video game. And Disney Infinity specifically is more of a video game toy box situation. Yeah, I never really paid attention to it back in the day. I already didn't like Skylanders type games, so you know, why would I care? But I do remember taking a look at the full aisle of Disney Infinity toys that used to be at my local Toys R Us. You know, in the good old days. And even though I had no interest in the game itself, I did like some of these toys. Especially like, yeah, you know, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, ooh, and the Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. That was really cool. They all had a cute, unique art style and eh, they caught my eye every once in a while, but I never actually picked any up. 
until now! Because if you couldn't guess from the fact that this is a Phineas and Ferb video and I already showed them on screen already, Phineas and Ferb is in fact part of Disney Infinity. They're well, I guess Phineas and Perry, and Ferb didn't get the invite. As far as I can tell, these Phineas and Perry Disney Infinity figures mainly just unlock the characters for use in the big toy box mode of the game, and they have their own abilities and all that. I don't know, I don't really think it's worth deep diving into Disney Infinity to find more Phineas stuff. Yeah, at least not right now. We're mainly focusing on the toys today, so let's actually look at those. And actually, I think these Disney Infinity figures are really nice. The Perry figure is genuinely great. The actual design isn't all that different from the action figure that we looked at earlier, but he's definitely got a cooler action pose. And Phineas, my god, I think they did it. I think they finally made a 3D Phineas toy that isn't horrifying. I mean, look at him. They gave his weird head and his stupid little body a bit more of like a stylized look. And they gave him like actual eyes instead of creepy little dots on giant white circles. I mean, it's not perfect. Uh, Phineas still isn't really meant for 3D. And if you turn him the wrong way, you might, ah! So yeah, uh, better, but not perfect. Overall, the world of Phineas and Ferb toys are I'm gonna say bad, despite their best efforts. So when toys fail, you've already exhausted all video game options in a different video, and books are books. There's nothing else to do but to turn back to TV to find something to fill that Phineas and Ferb void. Of course, you it could just watch Phineas and Ferb, but that's too easy. We want something a bit less obvious here, I guess. And that's actually not hard to find because even though Phineas and Ferb ended in 2015 and is getting ready to come back soon, that doesn't mean the creators of the show have just been sitting around twiddling their thumbs over the last eight years. On top of the occasional extra Phineas content here and there, the creators of Phineas and Ferb, Dan Pobbenmeyer and Jeff Swampy Marsh, have worked on some completely different shows that just happen to be in the same universe as Phineas and Ferb. I've talked about them briefly before, but since we're going all out here, screw it, let's do it again. First up, in 2016, our dynamic duo put out Milo Murphy's Law, an entire animated series based around, well, Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. The main character, Milo Murphy, is a descendant of the creator of Murphy's Law, who I assume was named Murphy, so bad fortune follows him around literally everywhere he goes. And they're not playing around. The universe wants this kid dead. In the first five minutes of the first episode, Milo and his friend Zack get chased by a giant concrete drainage pipe that came loose when a bunch bungee cord broke. Milo then uses that bungee cord to lasso away, but then it snapped in half, leaving him and Zack running on top of the drainage pipe as it led them off a cliff, face planting into a ton of mud before the pipe fell on top of them. Not killing them, but definitely making them miss their bus to school. Milo couldn't use his phone GPS to find a way to the next bus stop because of all the mud, so he pulled out a paper map, which then got scooped up by a hawk. Cool. As they then tried to take a shortcut through the rock quarry, which was being filled up by a random oil spill, that hawk that stole the map then swooped overhead, catching the map on an errant spark from a telephone pole. The map caught on fire, the hawk dropped it, and it set the entire oil spill ablaze in the first five minutes, not including the theme song time. But Milo remained positive and prepared the entire time. And of course it all worked out in the end. That's Milo Murphy's Law. And as you can probably tell, just looking at it, the show's got a lot in common with Phineas and Ferb. The art style isn't necessarily identical, but it's real similar. You can immediately tell the shows from the Phineas and Ferb guys. Plus the sense of humor is identical. They still do songs all the time, which is cool because Milo's voiced by Weird Al of all people. And it even shares some of the characters. Yeah, Doofenshmirtz becomes a recurring character in Milo Murphy's Law by season two. And of course, where Doof is, other Phineas and Ferb characters are sure to follow. The show's really fun. Not quite as special as Phineas and Ferb, but a pretty solid option if you're looking for something new to fill the void. Speaking of new though, Dan Pavenmeyer recently created an even newer show that premiered just last year, Hamster and Gretel. Uh, despite the hamster getting top billing, the show is mainly about Gretel, a little kid who is randomly given superpowers by like, aliens or something, I don't know. Her older brother Kevin was meant to get superpowers too, but instead they went to their pet hamster, hamster, a plus naming. Hamster and Gretel then become local superheroes while Kevin helps guide them as the brains of the operation. And from there, the show's basically what you expect. Fighting villains, balancing normal life with hero life, maintaining secret identities, even though Gretel still goes by Gretel when she's a superhero, etc., etc. You know, superhero stuff. But of course, it's still got everything you'd expect from a show in this, like, Phineas and Ferb lineage. The art style and senses of humor are, again, super similar. Jeff Swampy Marsh might not have been involved in the creation of this show, but he's definitely still providing voices, like always. And of course, there's there's still plenty of songs, just like in Phineas and Ferb and Milo Murphy's Law. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, the first five minutes of this show's premiere also involves a giant concrete drainage pipe. Huh. 
Weird. All of these shows are totally solid, and Phineas and Ferb fans will 100% find stuff to like in both Milo Murphy's Law and Hamster and Gretel. There's two seasons of Milo Murphy's Law, and that's about it, unfortunately, but Hamster and Gretel is still brand new. I think the first season wrapped up super recently, like earlier this month, and a second season has already been confirmed. And don't forget, all of that is still on top of the fact that Phineas and Ferb are coming back. You could almost argue this video was entirely pointless. That that that's it. That that's that's the end of the video. <laughs>